Welcome to episode 137 of the Scarlet Faithful Podcast. I'm Aaron Brightman coming to you on Wednesday, August 16th. Today's episode, I wanted to focus on five areas where I feel like Rutgers football has to has to get answers, right? In terms of the right answers for the 2023 season. It's obviously specific to personnel, um, but in terms of certain areas of need that they need to come through, because if they don't, they're going to have some major issues. So let's start with, and and these are not, I I mean, I wouldn't say these are obscure by any means, but I'm not talking about, you know, Gavin Wimsat being able to complete passes on an, you know, 65% accuracy. That's not what I mean, but let's start there. I think what is crucial is developing a reliable and consistent safety valve for Gavin Wimsat in the passing game. And I think there's, for, for me, there's, well, I guess two candidates that stand out to me um, with the potential for a third. Uh, well, let's, let's say the three, right? So we know Johnny Langan has been transitioned to tight end over the last, you know, couple of years. Uh, I think that Shiraka is going to get the most out of him at the tight end position. I think he could end up being uh, a big part of the offense in a way that we all kind of have hoped that he could become. I know that Sean Bowman's here as the tight end uh, transfer FCS all conference, and he's going to play a ton as well. But I think Langan has a chance to be in, in that kind of short to intermediate passing game, 10 to 15 yards, you know, up the middle. I think it makes some tough catches and, and I would love to see Langan just have a, you know, his best year as a Rutgers player. I, I think that he honestly has gotten uh, not enough, not enough respect, to be honest with you, in, in terms of what he's sent to the program. And I think that he has a chance to develop into a pretty reliable option at tight end this year. Running back Aaron Young, I think, is supremely talented as a pass catcher out of the backfield. He's been hurt throughout his career. But I'm hoping that he is someone that is a focal point for Wimsat in the passing game. You know, screen passes, dump offs, you know, perhaps him, you know, cutting across the middle of the field. I just think that Aaron Young, he can do a lot with the ball in his hands, with open space as a pass catcher. You know, he's, listen, he, he could be, uh, he could have success as a runner as well. But I think his his strength is catching the ball out of the backfield. Rutgers has not utilized him enough in his career. Again, he has been injured uh, for quite a bit uh, of his career. But I think that if he's someone that can stay healthy, Rutgers could really utilize him in the short pass game. And then the third candidate is someone that, you know, is kind of, I think, um, been underappreciated as well as Christian Dremel, I think as a slot receiver, I know, you know, Rashad Rochelle gets a lot of the headlines and listen, I hope that Rashad Rochelle develops as well and has a tremendous year. But I think that Dremel is someone that's just, he's not going away. Like I, I, you know, he was, he won the offensive award for most improved offensive player. Uh, I, I think that, you know, he is, he could be a really reliable guy to the slot. I think that, you know, um, especially on third down, and he's a guy that no one's, you know, we're talking about Jaquay Jackson. We're talking about uh, Nassim Brantley. We're talking about Chris Long. Uh, you know, Isaiah Washington has the most receptions back. Uh, but I think Christian Dremel is someone that could end up being really big in the passing game, in that short passing game. Uh, again, 5, 10, 15 yards uh, out of the slot and uh, utilized in different ways. I, I, and I think that, you know, listen, he's not uh, he's a breakaway speed. But I think he's got pretty reliable hands, and I think he's someone that could emerge there. So I think those three options, Langan, Dremel, and Aaron Young, could all emerge, and hopefully more than one emerge as reliable options in the short passing game for Gavin Wimsat. I think it would go a long way in terms of helping the offense through the air, also Wimsat's accuracy, and just being able to move the ball. And, 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 you know, it's not, they're not going to just be able to run the ball on first and second down with Sam Brown and expect success. They got to have options. And, you know, it's not about whims at throwing downfield as much as it is being accurate in the short, in the short game and being more creative using slants, using screens, um, you know, button hooks, even as something we haven't seen a ton of, I, I think those are all things that those three guys can be effective in. Let's move on. Offensive line, obvious, specifically right side of the line. It has to develop. 
you know, I, uh, I think Ireland Brown has, has, has come a long way as a center and, and pretty reliable. I think uh, we know Holland Pierce has developed quite a bit. He's now flipping from the le- uh, le- uh, right side to the left side, as is Curtis Dunlap, uh, who was, you know, solid enough. Uh, you know, he has his limitations. He's not super mobile as a, as a guard, but I think that they feel good enough about him next to Pierce and in between Brown. And they're flipping him to the left side, right? You're, pr- you're protecting Wimsat's blind side. And now you have two big needs and big question marks on the right side of the line. We know right tackle it appears to be a competition between Tyler Needham and Kamar Missouri. It's a little bit smaller. And then inside at guard, right side, you have um, Mike Schiaffoni, the senior, and then Kobe Asamoah, who was a true freshman last year, started the last three games this season. So out of those four guys, you got to get two starters and you got to get two guys that, you know, are going to be consistent enough. You know, I don't think anyone expects the line to be a top half of the Big Ten line, but they have to be somewhat reliable, right, in terms of generating some push for, for the run game uh, and and provide average pass protection for Wimsat. I think part of what will help is rolling Wimsat out, you know, RPOs with Wimsat, you know, him be getting involved on the ground as a, as a runner, uh, mixing things up for the, for the defenses, uh, not making things so predictable. But at the end of the day, the right side's got to hold. And, of course, you know, everyone's got to pull their weight. Uh, Rutgers, as an offensive line, has come a long way in that regard in terms of their, their weight and their size. But now, Pat Flaherty, offensive line coach, they have to take that next step. I'm really high on Kobe Asamoah uh, long term. Uh, he's He's got the size. I, I think he, you know, showed, showed some flashes last year. You know, he, he's, I mean, it's never ideal to throw a f- true freshman uh, into the fire. But I thought he did a pretty decent job, and I think he's he's got potential. So, be interesting to see what they do. They might go with the veteran Chiafone to start, and you can see Asamoah, you know, overcome him at, at over the season. We'll see, but you know, uh, I think long term Asamoah's got a bright future. And then and then right tackle, you know, between Needham and Missouri, it's gonna be interesting. Uh, I, I you know, Chiano's given indications they want a true starting five. It's not something they want to necessarily rotate. They have rotated in years past. I'm sure Flaherty is preaching starting five. So we'll see what happens, but the right side of the line, obviously a huge question mark and something that Rutgers has to get figured out as a whole to take a step forward on the offensive line. Then the defensive line depth, I think is, you know, maybe not getting enough attention. Uh, Part of why the Rutgers defense gets worn down year after year is the defensive line doesn't have enough depth. Yes. The offense is not consistent enough. Yes. They get worn down just by being on the field so much, but that's part of the depth of the defensive line. You need, a good Big Ten defensive line has eight to ten guys you could rotate throughout the game, and Rutgers hasn't had that in a long time. So, do they have that this year? Uh, let's see. Let's just run through the whole roster. Isaiah Eton transferred from Ole Miss. You know his article today, uh, Brian Fonseca, about his size. Everyone's marveling how big he looks and everything. Can he be effective? He had, you know, he's got pretty good experience from Ole Miss in the SEC. So, I'm hopeful. Uh, but can he make an impact? Can he be a disruptor on that line? Can he be a run stopper? Uh, he is certainly a, a key piece that can add depth to the defensive line. Uh, you have Kenny Fletcher, who I'm really high on as a true sophomore after showing flashes last year. He had a tackle in, in, in every one of his uh, last 11 games. He had a couple of sacks at the end of the season. Uh, he's a high, high energy, high potential player that I think is going to have a big role this year. Jordan Thompson was, you know, uh, played quite a bit last year. Uh, as a, as a rule guy off the bench. And I think he, you know, certainly is someone you can count on to be part of that rotation. Again, Wesley Bailey, I think still underrated, you know, had a, a big impact last year at times uh, off the edge. Uh, can he take another step and be a true uh, consistent disruptor game to game and be an all big 10 player? I think he has that potential. Let's see who else. That's uh, what number are we at? We're at, that's four guys I mentioned right there. Keontae Hamilton and nose guard, another guy, you know, former wrestler. He he's shown flashes at times. Can he be consistent? Can he stay healthy? Can he be uh, a game to game impact player? Uh, that's five. Then we're looking at Aaron Lewis. We know uh, Mayan Ahanatu. We know Renee Conga was an impact player at times. He played every game last season. 
on the defense. He played nine games, uh, and, uh, you know, his production wasn't too high. Uh, but I, I did think that, you know, he's someone that can develop. He's only a junior now. Uh, so that would bring you to eight guys. And then you have some, you know, Motore is someone they could rotate along the defensive line. Uh, as an edge, you know, he's led Rutgers in sacks in 20 and 21. He's back healthy this year. Obviously, with Deion Jennings and Tyree Powell, they're probably going to play two linebackers a lot. You also have Moses Walker. I think Ture could certainly see more time on the defensive line. Kayshawn Griffin's a guy they've been high on uh, that, you know, is someone that that hopefully could make a big leap. He didn't play a lot last year, played, which is one, one game. Uh, Kenny, I, I, and I, listen, I, I don't know what impact he's making the camp, so I'm not blowing smoke, but I, he's a guy that I look at that you say, Hey, can he, can he make an impact? Uh, and then I think as a true freshman, Jasir Peterson is certainly someone that I would like to see, uh, what he can do. And it'd be interesting to see. So they have the potential. I'm, I, you know, there's probably someone I didn't mention that could, could make a leap and could end up being uh, a factor. We know Lewis, we know Atanahu, uh, 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 Mayan Hanatu, uh, will anchor that defensive line. Wesley Bailey, uh, Kenny Fletcher, Mo Ture. It's it's a talented defensive line. Can they have eight to ten consistent contributors? I think I think they can, and I think that will go a long way towards the defense taking another step forward this year. Two more to go. Let's talk about specialists. Jay Patel, uh, Shiano talked about uh, right now being ahead for the kicker. Uh, that's huge. I think that he has a ton of potential. He was high, uh, you know five star kicker coming in. Local kid, South Brunswick, will be a great story. June McTammany uh, struggled from 30 to 40 yards last year. He's got a big leg, did kick some long field goals, but struggled with the accuracy. He is going to do kickoffs, so Patel can just focus on field goals and extra points. He's, you know, it's just his second year. I, he's got, you know, obviously long-term uh, potential, and why not try to develop him and make him the guy this year? He could have a monster impact on this team. If he could be a reliable, reliable option within 45 yards for this team that the offense can, you know, listen, if they can just get to 20 points a game and th if they do that, they're going to need probably two field goals a game. I don't think they're going to, you know, can they average three touchdowns a game? I hope so. But anything they get out of the kicking game, if they can get, you know, close, you know, 35, 40, 45 yards, if Patel can come in and kick 80 plus percent from that and maybe that's asking too much. I'm not trying to put pressure on the kid, but I just I just think that he can, based on uh, his high school career and what I've heard of him. Uh, you know, obviously we'll take over 70 percent, but if he could be, let's say, let's settle 75 percent, all right? If he could be 75 plus percent, that'd be a huge asset for the offense, and um, you know, definitely a storyline to watch. Flynn Appleby got a feel for the kid. Uh, he's got to replace uh, the greatest punter in program history and one of the greatest punters in college football history in Adam Corsak. He was groomed by Corsak last year. He comes to the same kicking academy in Australia. He does not have to be Adam Corsak. He cannot be Adam Corsak, but can he be reliable? I think another underrated storyline is we don't really understand how big of an impact Corsak was with field position. He made a huge impact with field position, which helped that defense. If you don't have anything close to that this year, it's going to be a, a, a really different story and, and, and a whole other thing for this team to overcome. Flynn Appleby just has to be himself and just has to be consistent. Can he, you know, average, you know, 42, 43 yards a kick? Can he try to limit touchbacks, you know, keep the ball out of the end zone? Um, no one's expecting brilliance, but can he be good? That's all he needs to be. Flynn Appleby just needs to be good and consistent. I hope he can be. I think he can be. Why not root for the kid? Why not have confidence in the kid? They they're putting all their you know all their uh, all their apples in the basket for Appleby. Um, so let's hope so. But I think that that obviously specialists can really impact this team. But in particular, I think how effective Corsac was with field position for Rutgers last year. That is an area that they can't have. You know, they're going to have a regression, but it can't be so dramatic that it's a whole nother new issue for this team to overcome. And then lastly, special teams in general. Coverage really went, uh, you know, was not as good last year. The return game was not as effective. Uh, Shiano lamented the fact that they they had two fumbles in the return game on Saturday's scrimmage. Was not pleased at all, rightfully so. So major, major questions there. And listen, 
I, I this is uh, there is no special teams coordinator, right? And Shiano's done this before, and we saw last year we saw a step back, and they can't have another step back, and they can't be the same as that. They need to be better on specials, in coverage, and in the return game. You know what uh, skill position players will be in the return game remains to be seen. Uh, will they improve in coverage? You know how many freshmen will be involved in the coverage? How many? How many regulars is Shiano going to put in coverage? I think that's going to be interesting. I think if you see, you know, a lot of regular players on the two deep in coverage units, that shows some real urgency for Rutgers in the coverage game on specials. And, you know, in terms of blocking downfield and return game, they, you know, the offense is, is needs to improve, but the offense isn't going to be a top 50 offense, right? They're not going to be a top half big 10 offense, most likely. So you need everything you can out of your special teams. You need everything you can out of your special teams, both helping with offense in terms of field position and getting points and in terms of helping the defense with pinning your opponent and also, you know, making your opponent drive the length of the field. All those things have to happen. So listen, this was a, this was a fly by the seat of your pants podcast episode. I just kind of came up with it on the fly, but these are all things I think are really important to Rutgers having a successful football season Thank you for listening and watching once again. Uh, read all my coverage on scarletfaithful.com, and I will talk to you tomorrow.